Welcome, everyone, and we're back for another session of Productivity Power Hour. And so today we're going to talk about something that, well, is on my mind a lot because it's something I use, which is around the concept of daily notes. And so I'm not going to do this is not a tutorial by any stretch because that will be for a separate time where I think we walk through the reasons for daily notes and that kind of thing. And we'll probably touch on that a little bit in this session. But really what I want to do is take the time to go over this blog post that recently came out that was mentioned on Eleanor Connick's newsletter. And it's really about like deep dive on someone's daily notes. And I thought it'd be great to do sort of an examination of one, like what it's like to see how other people use daily notes. But then since I haven't really read this in full yet, this would be an opportunity to also see like how I take notes, how I process things, and we can kind of just go from there and just play around with it. And more importantly, or maybe not more importantly, but the thing I'm, ter I'm excited for is that based on what we learn from the Obsidian Daily Notes in this, we're gonna actually then go ahead and actually then probably do some enhancements to my personal daily work note workflow. So this should be pretty fun. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's switch on over to the live screen. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to open up this blog post, which was featured on Eleanor Connick's newsletter, which so actually let me just go ahead and give her a shout out because her stuff, honestly, love the work that she does to help put roadmap updates in, in an easy to like understand email newsletter. So again, if you're in love with Obsidian and want to find other things and get the latest and greatest, be sure to check that out. So I'll go ahead and drop that in the resources section for people in the future. But we're here to talk about this blog post, which came across my feed. And uh, let's see, it looks like the zoom might be a little big in this case. Uh, I try to keep the typography as readable as possible for people. So just forgive me if sometimes it is a little bit large, but I just figured the accessibility is better than blurry text that people can't read. Yeah, that's basically where I'm at with that right now. As we can see here, this is a comprehensive guide to how this person, let's see, Buccaneers Bounty, is that the author's name on here? Let's actually, let's give him a shout out or them a shout out, let's find out. Why Buccaneer's Bounty? Ah, yes. Gentry Gibson, a bookish pirate enthusiast. Thank you to Gentry for writing this. I'm looking forward to diving in. So the first thing we're going to do, actually, is we're going to take notes on this as we go. First thing first, though, as a web developer, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, though, because this stuff is getting in my way. And I really just want to maximize real estate for this. So let's get away the action bar. We already know we want dark mode. The beauty of understanding how websites are built. You can just clean it up to do exactly what you want. Look at this. Much, much better. Okay. So we can see here that even in this preview of Gentry's daily notes, this is actually fairly, and this is, and actually by intent, there's a lot going on here in a good way in that there's a lot of things being tracked. And I'm personally very curious on how all this is working because one of my biggest challenges with Obsidian is at some point it feels like a lot of the data exists, but then it's manual to corroborate it together. And so for something like a daily note, this has always been a bit of a tricky thing. And I've used tags as a way to try to like filter out certain blocks that mean certain things. But I've never really fallen in love with any strategy just yet, which is why I haven't like shot, shouted it off the rooftops. However, from the little bit I've seen from this blog post, it looks like there is some new techniques to try out. And so there's a lot of potential here. So let's go ahead and go through. Now, for the, as, don't worry, we're not going to literally just read word by word and just sit here in silence. I'm actually just going to basically kind of like skim, sk speed through, and then try to summarize and take notes as we go through so that we can, basically, you can see a bit of my note taking workflow and we can go from there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bump this to the left, bump this to the right, or sorry, left. And then I'm going to go ahead and shrink the font a little bit on this so that we can actually do this. And then more importantly now, what I want to do is let's take a note. This is called how I use the Daily Notes plugin by Gentry Gibson. All right. And then actually, I'm going to write comprehensive guide because that phrase is compelling to me because that's something I might think about whenever I'm like, who is that person that wrote this comprehensive guide on daily notes? This is how I write it. Now, again, you might be wondering, like, why don't I copy this title and just drop it in? One, I've done Obsidian long enough to know that the colon is a legal character. And so it's just easier for me to just just and to be honest, sorry, let me rephrase that by making sure that the title makes sense to me, I basically am in increasing the odds that I'm actually going to be able to actually be, I'm actually going to be able to recall this basically and uh, talk about it later on or more retrieve it. 
So this is a blog post. Let me just do real quick the creator here. I'm just going to give Gentry a tag and then inspired by, this is by Eleanor. Let's see, did I not spell her name wrong? Eleanor. Oh, did I not have a tag for her already? That's unfortunate. I could have sworn I did. Well, if I don't, that's fine. We will make it happen. Yes, there you go. Eleanor has her own tag now. And then finally, the only thing, oh, the origin of this is from today's Power Hour 13 right here. Okay, great. So as you can see, one of the things I always try to do is add at least spend a good, just like a, a 30 seconds to a minute, dropping some relevant links and tags that might help me f find this stuff later on. Because that's ultimately what knowledge management is about. And again, I think knowledge management sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap for being a bit pretentious because people are like, I don't know, it's like knowledge management just, it can sound a little hoity-toity, I think, to some people. And really, it's just about learning and connecting the dots of the various things we do in our lives. And I don't know about you all, but I know for myself at least, I've gone through a lot of different phases in life, from like a photography phase to a poker phase, I have a go phase, chess phase, like and Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic, I can keep going, but the problem is that like over time, as you move from phase to phase and shift, sometimes those, I call it like domains of knowledge, start to become lost to you, and then it becomes trickier to navigate back through those paths of like neurons to figure out like, oh, there was this thing over here that reminded me of this. And I'm a huge believer in having knowledge and principles be built up over time. And as a result of that, this means that, for example, I think a great example of this is video games. For those who have played video games, you'll know that as you, from your first video game to your latest video game that you've played, there are skills you've acquired over the course of your video game playing like lifetime that have amounted to you having basically certain abilities as far as being able to navigate certain types of gameplay. So for example, if you play first person shooters like Call of Duty, Valorant and that kind of thing, a lot of times that came from the days of like when we played like Quake or if we Counter-Strike in those sort of games. And those mechanics, even though they're not identical to what is eventually built on for modern games today, like Fortnite and other things, you can translate that. And so the reason I didn't actually bring Fortnite when I was talking about first-person shooters is because it's a different style. It's like from a third-person perspective when you're playing that game. But the mechanics, again, can translate in ways that are like not necessarily, um, they're not one-to-one, -one, but they're related, they're ten tangential. And, my rant on this is to basically say here that because knowledge can be built upon itself like this, when innovation comes from the intersection of different fields, then allowing your brain the opportunity to have those sort of connections is really critical for you to grow as an individual. And if we have computers to help us do this, why not? Why not leverage this kind of technology, especially when it's, again, the cost of entry is fairly cheap. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's see, okay, cool, there's a vault here. Yep, 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 okay, daily notes plugin. Oh, this is a basic intro to the daily notes. Yep, that's fair. Okay, so in this folder structure, looks like, okay, so in this case, Gentry calls it a diary, right? So let me see, it houses all notes in a diary directory. So this could also be for those in, this could also be probably like considered like a journal. I currently call it a timeline. And the reason for this is because I think of them as like time specific notes. And so they're time stamped and especially because there's daily notes, which is represent specific days. Then you have monthly notes, oh, sorry, daily, monthly, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, half year, then full year. And to be honest, you can even go further than that. And hence why I consider it more of a timeline because you see almost like different segments of time through this sort of folder of notes. Granted, there's no judgment either way. There's just some ideas for you to think about. Okay, yep. So there's a templates folder, diary. Oh, I like these icons. That folder icon's nice. And then, oh, this is, I sorry, I'm a little distracted here, but I like that, is that like a notepad? Oh, a spiral notepad. Okay, I gotta remember that emoji in the future. That's cool, okay. So daily notes. Okay, there's, he has his daily notes hub. I'm really curious what this hub is. There's a media log. Okay, that's definitely something to keep in mind. I'm, I'm curious about that. New discoveries log. Okay, I had implemented something similar to this at one point. 
Ship's log. Okay, this is good. This is similar to another thing. Even has a task log. Okay, so this is one of the things that piqued my interest originally. Is that, frankly, there's a lot that's being tracked here, and I think there's a, probably some techniques in here that's well worth learning. So I am pretty darn excited about this. Okay, yup, zeros, great. Okay, so we see here that in the daily note, so actually let's do, for a quick recap, in case people aren't familiar with what a daily note is. They're essentially individual files, or they're basically, f they're, yes, they're markdown files, in other words, just like every other note, with a specific difference that they actually have the, using a ISO 8601 format, which is basically the year, 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 the year, the month, the day. That's like the format. So why month, day, day. Each note is basically, this format is saved specifically for these notes because later on, they can be referenced in other notes that are, want to re reference a specific day. So if you want to reference someone's birthday, for example, you can do that. And so to show you an example of how like daily notes work in mine, for example, so let me open up a new, yep, let me open up a new tab. Let me create a new note down here. Let's do July 25th like this. You'll see here that for me, as you can see, this daily note here is July 25th. I have a little bit of front matter up here just to track some basic metadata. But then I also have aliases here, which is nice because what this does is it allows me to reference the note in other ways inside other documents. And so especially when it comes to things like unintentional linking or what I think, what, they, what do they call, unlinked mentions. So when another note mentions July 25th, this note can actually be connected to it because it means that any day that's July 25th would be relevant to this. And so an example of this is someone's birthday, for example, would be, let's say, like July 25th, 1980. And so if the birthday is July 25th, 1980, you still might want to be reminded that, for example, that later on, on July 25th, that actually is still their birthday. And it doesn't need to be exactly 1980 for you to remember that. And so this is why, for example, I have this like little section of, oh, for any query that mentions July 25th inside of my people notes, please make sure to mention that because this is how it will tell me there's birthdays and stuff. To be totally honest with you, for those wondering, there are plenty of better ways to be managing people's birthday, particularly through your contact books in your phone. That's probably where you're going to be storing it. But I'm, part of me is just exploring how different concepts can be linked together. So I'm using common situations that people might have and then how to actually leverage that and showcase that within Obsidian. Especially because for those of us who spend a lot of time in Obsidian and if daily notes become part of your daily routine, this means that you might not be looking at your contacts or your calendar and... Sometimes the calendar doesn't show the right thing, so this would automatically surface it. And the other thing, too, is that as data privacy becomes, at least in my opinion, an increasing concern amongst customers and users, it's, it's questionable whether or not you want to actually store that like personal information in a third-party database where it could get hacked, it could get shared. And so if it's something you just want to save for yourself that's saved locally, Obsidian is a great place to do that. And for example, if we look at my people template note, one of the things I've done here is that I've created these sort of private areas that use callouts. Again, this is a technique I can explain another time. But what it does is it allows you to see, for example, actually, I'm just going to put this in here now because actually basically all the people I want to be able to do this. So I have like birthday in here. And so that in the future, like basically if I'm opening my note, I can say, oh, someone's birthday is July 25th, 1980. It will get related to this day. That's how that works. Okay, so you can see here, what I'm also doing for myself is I am trying to come up with a way to provide a summary of what happened during my day. I'm trying to figure out how to keep track of a general list of objectives. So basically, this is my task management approach ever. I still have found task management in Obsidian to be rather painful. So I'm, the, there are, the jury is out on that piece. But you'll see that here I have my timeline for the day as far as like generally what my calendar is going to look like. And so once again, you're probably thinking, Ben, you have a calendar. Why do you need all this? Because the calendar is nice for like general blocks of time. But then when you want to make notes about what happened during a specific time, especially if it's like an achievement, then those are harder to track in a calendar. Like, I, yes, you can create an event for every achievement. But then how do you query those things, et cetera? It's nice to be able to have this in here. It basically is what my thought was. And so anyways, so that's like a pretty... That's how I'm currently using daily notes on the regular. Now, if we look at this, now let's see, so now I can close this and open this. So it's interesting, we can see that there is a section which I had actually been 
playing around with, which is the I discovered tag. That's what I was doing at one point. So what I was doing was I would literally go, I would have a light bulb and be like, I discover, right, a new blog post. And so what was cool about this is that I could then go into my tags. Let's see. So I could go into over here, tags. I could go to I, and then what did I do? I discovered, and I discovered is gonna show me all the things that I discovered. So that was like my first foray into things because I think it's, it was neat. At one point, I, still, I haven't been as good about this and disciplined lately, so that's on me, to basically show over time the things that I've learned and exciting things, and it would be easy to filter out, right? Oh, what things did I discover in the year of 2022? I could grab all my daily from the year of 2022, find anything that was filtered with discovered and then just review that. And that would be interesting for inspiration and that kind of stuff. And so here, but what we see though, is that he is using the inline fields from data view. Oh, this is fascinating. Okay. So this is the new discovery. So it looks like new discovery. Okay. So utilizing data views inline field feature. Okay. I'm curious how that's going to play out, but we'll find out shortly. Okay, yep, new discoveries, great. Uses emojis for signifiers. Okay, that's great, that's fine. Tips and stuff, that's an interesting emoji. What is that? Let's see, ooh, what's going on? Okay, uh, okay, tools, resource, okay. So it's interesting, so basically, oh, so he uses the discovery, then he puts the emoji, then the thing that he discovered. Okay, I can see the value in that, great. So let's actually, let's talk about discovery. So let's say this is what's talking about first. Discovery uses emoji to differentiate different types of discovery. Okay, I like that. Each new discovery has a new discovery inline field included. This lets me track each entry in the new discovery's log. Okay, so the log is, okay, this is fascinating. We're curious. Ships log, note everything did in the day. Their H3 header, tasks happening, personal projects, reading. Wow, there's a lot in here. Okay, yep. Task, to-do list. So, ba bum 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 nested tags, remind me, remind me blog name, remind me video channel name. Interesting, so he's currently using tasks in order to sort the type of task, basically. Okay, yeah, yeah. so these are essentially contexts, which I've also been similarly doing with tasks. So again, task management, that's a separate thing, so that's fine. Happenings, okay, he has a life event. Life event also just talks about different things. This is great. Journaling, use the BR element at the end of each paragraph. Great BR element, interesting. Okay, when I display, oh, what is this? The ship's log can actually break it down by entry. Personal projects log, okay. Note ideas or personal projects and ideas. Inline field, yup. Uses signifiers, that's fine. So actually, this is just a general thing that Gentry does. Reading log. I like this. So reading log is cool. Reading log to track progress on books. This is neat. So because I was always wondering like how I could be like, oh, I read like this many chapters today or not. This is neat. I like that. See, look at this. Check mark. Dragon Ball Z finish all volume. This is really cool. One Piece. Ah, she reads One Piece too. Amazing. Love it. No wonder why I'm interested in reading this. A fellow One Piece fan. Okay, so Signifier currently reading. Yeah, okay. Web articles need to read. Still need a, oh, still need a literature note. Okay, that's interesting. So basically what I'm interpreting from this is that basically there are blog posts that you read and then there's things you really need to take notes on because otherwise it's just, frankly, you just forget about it. That's kind of actually what we're doing here. I didn't want to just gloss over it. I really did want to take out certain actionable items from this. So you know what we're going to do actually? We'll do a clipboard and we'll say these are, there'll be a bunch of to-dos that comes out of this, but that way we can just include some notes in here and then I can just play around with some stuff. Okay, video log here. Great. These are Okay, so video log, reading log. So basically this means to me, these are like, it's basically a media log. And so I'm, I actually did something similar. So I was talking about I discovered earlier. Then I also have like, I read, I watched. So it was th around the idea of like, I watched TV, I watched a movie, etc. Okay, video, finish, workout log. Okay, cool. Noting that BR, putting it all together, yep. So you have your title, your summary. 
Oh, interesting. At the end of each day, I add a title front matter and summary inline field describing what happened and other notable things to add title front matter at the top of daily notes. Wait, what? These two fields will be displayed in the old daily hubs note. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay, hang on. Uses a title front matter and summary inline field to display in the logs. Okay, this is interesting. Log notes. Okay, these are this. Okay, so clearly, let's see. How do I want to recategorize this? So let's see. Interesting. Let's see. Interesting things that being tracked, right? So there's the reading, new discoveries, media law, media to work out. Those are the main things like sticking out to me right now. So with the daily notes log, okay, that's relevant. So I'm dropping that here. New discoveries. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now we have those notes there. Okay, this is cool. So how do these log notes work? Let's take a look at log notes in general. So log notes, so they use data view plugin. So let's tag that. Uses data view plugin. Okay, that will display all the inline fields from your note. All log notes use a data view plugin to display content except for task log which uses a task plugin. Okay, interesting. Okay, so that's something to mention. Task log is using tasks plugin, which we can talk about that later. This is pretty cool. Okay, so the media log here. Okay, we see things that listening to audible books. Ooh, okay, so we see here new discoveries. Oh, these are these hubs. Wait, daily notes hub, media log, different headings. I like that. Explore using navigation tabs. They're called navigation tabs, but they're links that are separated by, by an emoji and the link itself. So example here is a bulb, new dis discoveries, let's see, ship. What emoji is this? I thought that was a, sh okay, whatever, ship's log, okay. And then wait, there you go, workout. Okay, this is cool. I'll explore this later to enhance other like hub notes. They're also, I think of them as either like dashboards or the Nick, Milo's from linking your thinking calls them maps, maps of content, MOCs. But anyways, oh, don't worry about that. Okay, great. Media log. So there's a reading, listening video. Okay, so this is what I've actually been thinking about too. For the media log, you have things that you're reading, you're watching, and you're listening to. Those are like probably the main three forms of media that you probably have. And then let's see. So data view, do table log from log where it contains listening log entry and empty sort get out oh okay that makes sense i think but since when could the where no, this is, okay, hold up, line my explanation. Table listening log is log. Okay, that means you, this tells the David to create a table displaying the listening log YAML field as log on the table, okay? Okay, so you can pick what folder your, okay, okay. Do, do, do. Can choose, actually, no. So again, so when you're taking notes, it's easy to put everything in one thing, but in this case, I'm gonna make a note section here. I can choose notes from folders. Okay, so this is where folders can be super helpful. Contain, okay. This contains to tell the only displayed notes that have the listening log inline field. You can change this field to reading log, video log to display those. Okay, that, File log, what? Where, 
normally when you do a data view, you only see the file name. So why is it suddenly rendering this stuff? How did it do that? Okay, so the only way I need to understand this because I was not aware data view had this ability, full reference, I need to look up the querying. I need to look up the where syntax. Nope, give me where. Stop it centered, quit. Okay, not queries, sort query language reference. Yup, give me the where. You can filter the where and the predicate where it's completed. Where modified last, yeah, so from what I understand, where was to me the filter, right? Like where you could, okay, where it contains. But how did it then table video log? Oh. Wait a second, I figured it out. It's actually able to, oh wow, I did not expect this. Okay, so this means what I'm what I'm learning here. Okay, let to just quickly explain what's going on here. Data view can actually pull the inline fields as part of a column. I was not aware of this, and I, and to be honest, it makes perfect sense now that I think about it. I just didn't think it could be queried like that. I wonder if there's any documentation for this. Inline fields, inline queries, and values in a page, inline access, inline field here. Task inherit all fields on the page. Status checked. Uh huh. Status check completed. Text. What is this? Field types. Where's my inline fields? Oh, here we go. Yep. Simple key value syntax you embed in your file. If you want to embed metadata inside of sentences or multiple fields inside a line, you can use the bracket syntax. Great. Parentheses syntax, but hides the key when rendered in reader mode. Interesting. Implicit. Annotates with a large amount of that automatically, like the day the file was created, the day links in the file tags. A simple markdown both ways. Oh my lord. Okay, that's pretty big. Because previously what I was doing, oh gosh, I was actually, I was trying to use tags because you could use the Obsidian search query block in order to grab specific lines out of a note. So to show you what I mean, let me demo this. So if we open the July 25th note that we just created, as you'll see here, one of the things I did here is that when I'm writing this note here and I'm saying like, I won the prize for et cetera, whatever. I, don't, I can't think of anything specific. If I star it like this, you'll see that it gets brought up here inside of this query block. So the way this thing is being written is that it's the a triple backtick query. It's saying, look at this specific file and then look for any block that contains the starred snippet. I never quite loved the way this looked, but if I understand data view correctly, I can do a table where I can grab, okay, so instead of this, I'm gonna now do, I'll do starred like this, and then be like, I won another prize for blue, okay. So now, oh no, data view pulled everything. Oh no, oh, okay, there we go. 5,000 files, good Lord. Okay, table from, okay, then I'm gonna pull specifically. So I'm gonna say timeline slash, let's see, reveal in navigation. Timeline, okay, here we go. So let me do this. Actually, let me just block this out real quick. Timeline, daily notes, 2022-07-25, where, actually, I don't even need to do that. I just need the daily notes, where starred 
exists. Oh, where it, oh, sorry, contains starred and then empty. I don't know what the second argument is, but we'll learn about it real quick. And starred as highlight. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to find out. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it pulled up a ton of stuff. So maybe I need to actually scope this down a little bit more. 0725. Oh my lord, that did work. This is huge. Another statement. Huh. I can't even begin to explain how... And you can copy this? Okay, okay. So, oh my gosh. For the sake of, if you see here, uh oh, where'd I go? All right, if I wanted to copy this, you'll see that I can't copy it, <laughs> which is one of the most infuriating things to me about the query block. Because I think there is, a, there is a plugin to deal with that. Oh, Matrak here, hello. You can add a URL link too. What are you referring to? You're saying a link to, to the table itself? I will say though, I want Obsidian to, or actually I know how to, I know how to do this in data view. I just have to write some JavaScript. I, I wish there was a way in data view to just hide the file name. Like I want to, this is phenomenal. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to look real quick. Obsidian data view hide file name. Without writing JavaScript, I really don't want to write JavaScript. I think if you convert field, hide the first column. Yep. Get out. What? Yes. Amazing. <laughs> okay. This is huge. This is a game changer. Can hide first column with without ID and then can query columns according to inline fields. Okay, you can add a URL link too. Oh, I see, I think I see what you mean. So you're saying that if I was like for Obsidian, for example, like adding a link in this, it shows up in here. This is brilliant. This is, this is quite literally what I need because this is, I can't even explain to you how happy I am right now because I've been trying to figure out a clever way to summarize things because I feel like we take a lot of notes and there would, ow, oh, this is huge. I can't even, okay, so hold on. Epic notes course. This is a technique that needs to be jotted down. Patterns, summary from inline fields using data view. Oh my gosh. Bonkers. I just, I'm so stoked. This is huge. Yeah, Mtrog here, or Matrog here in the chat is talking about when talking about new discoveries, basically you can do new discovery and then you can just add links to the stuff so that you don't have to also dive into the said note. Oh man, I just, huge. Okay, this technique alone is, was worth, like if I stopped here, this, it's unbelievable. Okay, anyways, so we have folders. Yep, contains listening log. Although actually the curiosity in me though does want to better understand the, I do want to better understand why the contains works that way. Why there are two arguments. So it contains a given function. So for objects, checks if the object has a key with the given name. And then, but why is the empty? Yeah, like that doesn't make, I wonder why there's a second argument that's necessary here to only display the notes that have the listening inline field. You can change its field. For the sake of argument, let's just look at this real quick because I think it's not immediately apparent to me. But if I went ahead and removed 
the second argument, does it still work? No. Every row during operation where failed in the first one, no implementation of contains found for argument string. But if I add this here, all of a sudden it works. So what am I missing about, what is, let me just close those windows. I'm missing something about the way this works. So if the file, oh, checks if the string has a given contains, I guess you're checking if every block contains that an empty string. It's not intuitive to me. For strings, check if the given value is a substring inside the string. So hello, low, true. Oh, okay, now I think I've unlocked it. So what we're saying here is that check if, the if it contains starred and if it's, and since it's an empty string, it always contains, or sorry, there's no value, so it should always be true. So to test this out real quick, actually, I think contains is a standard note. So if I'm like starred.contains, oh, contains is not. Includes, like this, yeah. So the, I think it's a similar idea. Contains is basically a utility function. That's how I'm going a little bit programming here. It basically allows you to check whether or not something is inside of a given string. And as we can see here in this example, starred, if you include just like nothing, it will always be true, because, or it's not nothing, but it's basically your way of forcing it true. I think that's basically what's happening there. Okay, I'm happy, that makes way more sense. Okay, great. Sort file name, that's fine, sorting is easy. So this is, okay, this explains how all the logging log works. Because what's ultimately happening is you have things that you wanna track during the day. So this can be food, this can be, um, yeah, actually, this is a very easy way to track food intake because uh, right now I'm doing like a I ate food and that kind of stuff. But instead, if I just did inline fields of meal and then I could do lunch or whatever, I could literally track what I've been eating throughout the day and it'd be easy to get a food log of this. And it wouldn't be terribly difficult. And so the thing is, though, this, yeah, wow. Okay, yep, yep, yep. I am on board. I'm sold on how this works. So life event, personal projects. So basically this takes inline fields to a whole new level is how I'll put it. Workout log, yep. Yeah, basically the principle is there. And this is, I don't know, when I'm trying to learn things, I'm all about trying to extract the core theory and core techniques. Because yes, you can implement tasks, you can implement specific contexts, but the thing linking all of them here is how to leverage inline fields from data view in a way that summarizes information that's relevant to you. That's really what all of this is about. Okay, I'm actually curious. We're gonna do a quick live on the task log though. So this uses the tasks plugin to basically do not done work, description includes. Yeah, I wait. Daily Notes Hub, okay, I'm actually curious how the Daily Notes Hub works for, let me see, go back, where is, there we go. There's my notes. Oh, here we go, without ID. Yep, the technique is actually in here. I just didn't see it in time. So it's interesting, you can do link plus title plus this plus summary. Whoa, that's intense. You can format stuff in the title. What? So that's how she gets his entries here to appear in one column. Oh, wow. That's smart. I like this because this is cleaner than what I've been dealing with columns that are cramped. So again, just to show you what I mean, if you look at the Build with Ben series, is this, this is just super cramped to me. It'd be nicer if it was like, oh, wow, this is, okay, okay. So learning a new technique here. Okay, actually, hang on a sec. Explore technique of using data view inline fields to create effective summary blocks. And I just, as another thing that just popped to mind as far as usefulness of this, for those who are figuring out like, especially if you're doing things like tracking your work, 
And I like to track my work in Obsidian because I want to know over time what I've been doing. One of the things my team tries to do is have daily async Slack updates. So I want to be able to say, this is what I did today. And so using the inline fields could actually help you very easily summarize what you did for the day. And then it's a, almost like a simple copy paste into Slack, which is pretty incredible. Okay. With that said though, explore technique of displaying single column titles. Let's see, but title plus file link. Yep. Incredible. Contain more information in a single row rather than splitting everything up into different parts. Okay. So the example is this, and unfortunately there is no linked header here. So I am going to have to just drop this and just make a note here. Can I do it like this? Yes. All right. That's going to have to be like this then. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. That'll have to do daily notes. That's fine. I understand how to do all that. That's easy enough. All daily notes, not a problem. Certain date. That's fine. Optional features, add lines. Oh, add lines. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So you can basically table view table automatically in. Okay. So there might be a need to like update styles for update styles. Whoop. Close that. Base styles for tables for data view to add this to obsidian. Yep. Okay. Dynamics navigator, read later, watch later tracker. Yeah. Okay. This is starting. I think the technique is trying to make sense to me. If you have statuses, read later, yep. Status backlog. That's fine. Sample vault, piece of cake, credits. Yeah. This is pretty incredible. So yeah, I think I'll definitely make a donation over to Gentry for that, but I'll do that later with that though. I think this has been incredibly fruitful just from experience. I guess I should look back into task plugin. I haven't, it been tricky for me to manage, but we'll see We'll try again. All right. Switching back. All right. This has been a really productive session. We've gone over and taken a look at Gentry's comprehensive look at how she does daily notes. And so Gentry, thank you so much for taking the time to write that learned a lot from it. And so huge shout out and tip a hat of respect for being so in depth with how things are worked, what you were thinking. I was able to pull away a lot from that. And for everyone who was able to watch and join, thanks again for hanging out. And for those watching on the recording, I hope you find this fairly interesting as like a way to basically enhance not only daily notes, like we walked into this thing about enhancing daily notes, but really what we ended up learning about our techniques on how we can summarize our notes better, better leverage Obsidian data view. And to be honest, this is what I really love about learning in general, to be totally honest, is that you never quite know where it's going to take you. You start out in one place and if you keep an open mind and figure, and just let the knowledge sort of dots and dots connect organically, you end up in a, it's just pretty fascinating where you might end up. And so. For that reason, it's always so exciting to be able to go on these journeys and to be able to have this recorded and to share this with you all. I really appreciate it. So with that said, that's a wrap for today. Appreciate everyone for joining me and until next time, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.